Hey everybody, Adam here. Hope everyone is doing well. Sorry it's been so long and sorry that this is so trashy. It's trash bags. Uh, I stapled them up some time ago so I could see what the natural lighting in that room would actually look like. Uh, since then I've put up some plywood just as a temporary thing. So now I'm just using them as trash bags. You never want to waste trash bags because they'll just end up getting thrown in a trash bag. It's ironic. Also, as you can see, uh, I decided to go with some cheap vinyl windows instead of the ones I planned on. I almost couldn't get that out with a straight face. That's just a little, I'm too poor to buy windows humor, and I wish I was just kidding. Uh, I'm actually working on getting some custom windows made for these rough openings because they discontinued the windows I was using, so that's always fun. Lastly, before we get started, I'm going to give you a preview of some of my future videos to come, so stick around for that at the end of this video, but now let's get on to the main subject, which is ceiling details from the inside. I'm going to start right here with what is probably the most uncommon, unusual detail. So, polyethylene foam going over the studs. Some of you might remember I also did this on the outside of the building before the sheathing went up. Same concept here on the inside. When siding goes across these studs and gets screwed to the studs, it's going to clamp this foam, making an air gasket. Now, I was caulking between gaps in the studs for a while, but since I was going to do the foam anyway, uh, I decided to scrap the caulking because the foam does the same job, faster, easier, actually more economic because it serves multiple functions. So it gives me that air gasket, but there's also a thermal benefit, an acoustic benefit. And I'm actually gonna take that foam all the way across the cavity, but that's a little bit more of an insulation detail that I will get to in a future video. So, that's detail number one. Moving over here, up at the top, we've got this joint all the way around the building where plywood from the parapet overlaps the main wall. So that's taped from the inside, taped from the outside, and there's a two by four batten now running across there, which is, yeah, clamping it closed essentially. So that's how that's being handled. Again, on the back side of the studs, we've got that foam that's handling this joint right here, this vertical joint. Now down here at the bottom, where we have the bottom plate and the sill plate, I'll start with the sill plate. So when I put the sill plate down, before I put it down, I did a zigzag of Loctite Premium. A lot of people will just put this foam underneath it, it's called sill seal. But that doesn't create, it gives you a capillary break, but it doesn't create a tight air seal because there are discontinuities in the concrete. So it doesn't make full contact in every spot. So that's why I did the zigzag underneath there. But that's also not good enough. I also, again, as some might remember from a future video, around the outside, I went around that bottom edge and I glued that edge up from the outside. And now I've done the same thing here again on the inside. I've glued that edge. So it's glued on both sides and underneath. And that's a, uh, that's water resistant PVA glue, wood glue. <clears throat> I ended up using a combination of Gorilla Glue and Type Bond 2. Uh, they're both PVA wood glues, so they're the same stuff. I, I buy them in bulk, and I just buy whichever is the cheapest. And, yeah, now that is properly sealed. And there are three things you can check for to make sure your sill is properly sealed. First and easiest, most obvious, is just get down low like this and see if you can see any light poking through. If you see light coming through, you got a leak. Uh, the second thing you can look for, that's one, number two, uh, bugs migrating through there, especially like tiny little ants and things like that that can really get through some tight spots. 
If you see any bug migration going through there, you got a leak. And number three, water. Uh, we actually had some water leaking in under the sill plate right over here underneath that window. Uh, now you can, you can make that happen if you want to find out. You can just go around the building with a hose, just soak down the bottom of the building, come back inside, see if you got any water coming through, then you know you have a leak. But if you glue under and on both sides, that should do the job. Now, this one's important. This joint right here, this is a big air leak I found out. The worst than under the sill plate, actually. Um, there are uh, plenty of cavities throughout the building where it actually is quite drafty right here. So what I've done here is I'm, again, I'm, I'm filling that up with wood glue. So that's just totally sealed shut. You can see I got some fresh glue curing right here. And yeah, I just, I just take it. Wood glue is not that expensive, especially if you buy it in bulk. So I just take it right up to the top. So I know that's completely sealed. And I was, I was a bit surprised by this one because that plywood is screwed to the bottom plate and the sill plate, but still air leaky. Now, do we have any other important sealing details to cover in here? I don't really think so. Oh, uh, yes, I do around the windows. So again, I'm taking, I haven't done it on this window yet, taking some of this polyethylene foam, the sill seal. And by the way, don't worry about the different colors, white, blue, pink. It's just different brands. It's all polyethylene. It's a plastic by, uh, you know, whatever brand is the cheapest. That's going to get stuffed up in here like so. Well, not like that because that's pretty sloppy. But you get the idea. Roll it up, fold it up, push it in there. I like it because it's not permanent. So like unlike, you know, a caulk or a spray foam, if I had to get it out, I mean, caulk and spray foam, that would, that would really be a nightmare, especially spray foam. But this stuff, if for some reason I got to take it back out, just pull it out, put it back in. Also, uh, I say this a lot, but I think it always bears repeating. When you air seal, you're also taking care of bugs. You're also taking care of water, uh, typically speaking. Uh, you know, if, if air can get through something, bugs and water can get through. If air can't get through, bugs and water probably not going to get through. And now, as promised, I'll give you a preview of my future videos since, again, it's been such a long time and people have been asking me. Let's take a look. Over here, I'm going to be doing a video on this weird insulation I'm putting in this room. This is a building science experiment. That's going to be a really fun one. Over here outside, started on the rain screen. So I'm going to have some rain screen videos coming up pretty soon. Doing a little cooking on top of the scaffold. That's just a joke. I'm using that as like a screw bin. Uh, probably going to do a two-parter on the rain screen. One just for the battens, one for the cladding. A lot of details for both that I want to cover there. So probably going to be best to split that up into two videos. And then I also am going to have a couple of videos talking about and going over some details on this wall that I'm building here. A uh, wall for the courtyard that is still very far from finished. But I will be uh, getting to some videos on that pretty quickly. I'm going to show you how to do that assembly on the left right over there. So stay tuned for that. I will see everyone in the next video. I'm going to go back into this meat locker now. And until then, peace.